How to Play Compounded. Better gaming through chemistry. Welcome to the lab, everybody. In Compounded, you and your fellow scientists will be taking on the task of lab managers, hastily competing to complete the most compounds before they're completed by others or destroyed in a lab fire. First, you're going to unfold the score track, that's the large board with the periodic table, and place it on the playing area, in reach of all players. Then, all scientists, aka players, will choose a color, orange, blue, red, green, or purple. Then each scientist will take one workbench, three claim tokens, one scoring token, and all four experiment tokens in the color that they had chosen. Next, you're going to place all element crystals in the elements bag, and then shake that gently just to randomize the crystals. Next, each scientist will place their scoring token above the scoring track. I typically put it on the game title, but you can set it off the board, beside the board. Just get it ready for when you start scoring points. Next, you'll take the lab tools. These are the small square punch board items. There should be one less of tools than the number of players in the game. The exception would be the lab key. There are only two. Next to the lab tools is a space to place the flame tokens. This is for you to stare and sweat at while playing the game. The more of these on the research field means the greater chance of a kaboom. Next, you're going to create the research field. So the research field, you're randomly going to deal the nine starting compounds. These are marked with the yellow border face up in a grid pattern of four cards. Shuffle the compound deck and fill the remaining grids with the top cards from the compound deck. So you should have a four by four grid laid out with a total of 16 cards. Next, each scientist is going to take two claim tokens and set them on their claim reserve. This is the space on the top left of the workbench. Then you're going to place one remaining claim token at the top of the study experiment, the active claim area. Scientists will each draw four random elements from the element bag and place them in the element storage area on their workbench. These are denoted by the four gray circles. Next, you'll take three storage markers. These are the round punch boards circles and place them underneath the four storage spaces on their workbench. These are removed when the scientist moves up on their lab experiment. More on that later. Next, each scientist will receive one wild element token and one personal fire extinguisher tile. The fire extinguisher should have the compound side face up. Next, let's set up the compound deck. Divide the compound deck into six stacks. You can do this loosely, or you can do five stacks of eight and one stack of seven cards. It's your choice. Set one stack of cards aside. Then place one lab fire card on top of each of the five remaining stacks. Then place those stacks one on top of another, and then place the stack that was set aside on the very top of the entire deck to form the final compound deck. As a variant, Instead of placing the lab fire on top of the five stacks, you can shuffle them in. A quick note on wild elements. A player may discard a wild element token during the research phase to take any element except for sulfur from the element bag and immediately place it on a compound in the research field or on their fire extinguisher. Normal placement rules for elements still apply. Let's go over the anatomy of a compound card. On the top left, you'll see the compound name. Below that, you'll see its molecular formula. To the right of that, you'll see two icons. The first on the left will be the elemental state of that compound. Those states are liquid, solid, or gas. To the right of that, you'll see what that compound card's atomic point value is. These are the points that you'll be scoring to help progress you to winning the game. If this circle is red, that helps denote that this is a flammable compound. Below this, you'll see the model or the spaces and elements that you will need to acquire to complete this compound. Along the bottom, starting with the left, you'll see a one large circle. That is for your claim token. Only one claim token can occupy a compound at a time. In the center, you will see 
a series of gray lines. Some will have flames, some will not. If a compound has flames, that tells you the maximum number of flame tokens this compound will receive before it explodes. Further to the right, if there is another icon here, whether be it a diamond or a circle, those will gain you additional abilities or tools upon scoring. If there's not, it's just a good old fashioned point palooza. Now let's get into the game. Each round of compounded is broken into four phases. The discovery phase, the study phase, the research phase, and the lab phase. Within the discovery phase, scientists will gain elements and initiate trades with other scientists. Trades can be for elements, for tools, for favors, pretty much anything goes. The study phase allows scientists to claim compounds on the research field. These are compounds that you'll be working on to help gain points, tools, and chemical reaction abilities. Third, we have the research phase. This is where the brunt of the work of the game is done, as scientists will be placing elements from their workbench out onto compounds in the research field. Can't score a compound if it does not have a completed compound on it. And lastly, the lab phase. These are where completed compounds are scored, workbench are managed, and the research field is replenished. During this phase though, be wary, as lab fires may occur. To start the game off, the scientist with the rarest elements on their workbench is the lead scientist and is given the wooden lab key. In the case of a tie, the youngest scientist is the lead scientist, whether that scientist was in the tie or not. The lead scientist is the first player to take actions in each phase. At the end of every round, the lab key is always passed to the scientist on that player's left. That player becomes the lead scientist for the next round. Okay, let's dig more into the phases. The first phase is the discovery phase. Beginning with the lead scientist, each scientist draws a number of elements, as shown on the discovery experiment, from the element bag. These elements are then placed on the scientist's workbench in the element storage area. After all scientists have drawn elements, trading then begins. Please note though, the discovery phase is always skipped in the very first round of the game as you start with four elements to begin with. A scientist may freely trade elements, acquired lab tools, a fire extinguisher, wild elements, or even future favors for anything from the other scientist or group of scientists. Traded favors, however, are only as good as the scientist's word. No deal for favors is ever binding. Scientists may not trade atomic points or experiment levels. At the end of the phase, after the lead scientist feels trading is complete, if a scientist has more elements than available spaces on his element storage area, he returns those elements to the element bag. Once the discovery phase is completed, we move on to experiment level two, or phase two, the study phase. Beginning with the lead scientist, as always, and proceeding clockwise around the lab, each scientist may place one claim token from his workbench that is not in his claim reserve onto an unclaimed compound, or they can pass. This continues until each scientist has placed all available claim tokens, determined by the number on their study experiment, or all have passed. Once a scientist has passed, he may not place claim tokens again this round. A scientist can pass with claim tokens still in the reserve. It is their choice to place them or not. After claim tokens have been placed, beginning with the lead scientist, each scientist with a claim token that was once placed in a previous round may move one and only one of those claim tokens to an unclaimed compound or back to their workbench. Claim tokens can only be placed on any open claim area on a compound card. Phase three, the research experiment. Beginning with the lead scientist, again, each scientist moves a number of elements shown by the research experiment level onto the research field. A scientist may place his elements on any claimed or unclaimed compound, or their personal fire extinguisher. A few notes on placing elements on compounds. Only scientists who claim a compound and who own that compound can score and benefit from completion. Scientists may place elements on other scientists claimed compounds, but cannot score any points by doing so. Unclaimed compounds, however, are a different story. 
When a scientist places the final element on an unclaimed compound, he places a claim token from his claim reserve, preferably with the temporary cl claim icon side up. This is the side that is all white with just your color icon. You'll place that on the compound card. It's a reminder that this card is yours when it comes to the lab phase. Claim tokens though are limited. If a player does not have a claim token in a claim reserve, he may not claim nor score from finishing an uncompleted compound. Unclaimed compounds containing previously placed elements can be claimed by a scientist in the study phase if that scientist has an available claim token. Lastly, for placement, there is the fire extinguisher. Scientists may place any number of elements, again, limited by the research experiment, onto their personal fire extinguisher, just as placing elements out onto the research field. One huge note, once during the research phase, scientists may trade three of any one type of element from their workbench for one specific element in the element bag. Once you do that, the three that you have removed will go right back into the bag. Phase four, the lab phase. During this phase, scientists will score their completed compounds, moving up the appropriate number of atomic points on the score track, and game lab tools, if available. If there are no lab tools available when you're supposed to claim one, you don't get the lab tool. Next, they'll raise their level of their experiments based on the state of compound, liquid solid gas that they've just completed, and trigger any chemical reactions. Scoring a compound. Beginning with the lead scientist and proceeding clockwise, completed compounds are scored. Compounds are considered complete when all open element spaces on the card are filled. The compound card is then removed from the research field and placed next to the workbench of the scoring scientist. The scientist scoring token is advanced the number of spaces on the score track equal to the compound's atomic number. The claim token is then returned to the scientist. If the claim token has a temporary claim sided up, it's returned to the player's claim reserve, which is again on top of the study track. Otherwise, it is placed on top of the study test tube and may be used the next round. All elements on the compound are returned to the element bag. Gaining lab tools. Some compound cards contain a specific lab tool icon. When that compound is completed, the claiming scientist takes the appropriate lab tool from the score table and places it on their workbench. The tool may be used in subsequent rounds or traded. Note, if a scientist already has that type of tool on their workbench, they cannot take another of that tool. The third thing you'll do once you complete a compound is you're going to raise your experiment level. Each compound has a chemical state which corresponds to a certain experiment on each scientist's workbench. Again, liquid, solid, and gas. After a compound is completed and scored, the claiming scientist may improve that particular experiment by moving that token upward one level. Instead of approving discovery, study, or research experiments, aka liquid solid gas, a scientist may instead choose to improve their lab experiment, which is the wild experiment. This will unlock one of the levels in your element storage area. Lastly, you'll trigger chemical reactions. Some compound cards have a chemical reaction icon. These are circular icons on the bottom right corner of the card. After these compounds are completed and scored, the chemical reaction immediately takes effect. More on chemical reactions in a bit. After all completed compounds have been scored, the lead scientist then draws new compounds, one by one, to fill the empty spaces in the research field, from left to right and top to bottom. The lead scientist then passes the lab key to the scientist to his left and a new round begins play with the discovery phase. However, if a lab fire is revealed while filling the research field, set the lab fire aside and finish filling the field. Then discard the lab fire and place a flame token on all flammable compounds. Again, flammable compounds are compounds with flames denoted in the bottom center. Any compounds that reach their flame token limit explode and are taken out of the research field and discarded. Any elements on the exploding compounds will scatter to compounds that are horizontally, vertically, and diagonally adjacent. If the exploding compound is claimed, then the scientist whose claim token is on that compound will choose where to place those elements. If there is a space for the element on an adjacent compound, the element must be placed. 
all elements that are not able to be placed are immediately discarded. If the exploding compound is unclaimed though, then the lead scientist gets to choose where those elements scatter. Any gaps left in the research field at the end of a lab fire are then filled with cards from the top of the compound deck. Please note that two lab fires cannot occur during the same turn. If a second lab fire card is revealed during the same lab phase, discard the second, third, etc. and continue refilling the research field. One exception to dual lab fires is that a volatile chemical reaction can be triggered. This is treated differently than a lab fire. I will go over that in a moment. Speaking of lab fires, as I noted earlier, all scientists start with a fire extinguisher. During a player's turn, if they complete that fire extinguisher during the lab phase, they will flip it to the opposite face, showing the open and available fire extinguisher at their disposal. If a scientist has completed their fire extinguisher or traded to acquire a completed fire extinguisher, they may discard it to prevent the placement of one flame token on any one compound. That compound can be claimed by yourself, other scientists, or unclaimed. Let's go over your lab tools and how to safely operate your lab with them. The first one is safety goggles. You can discard safety goggles at the start of the research phase, any research phase, to discover a second time this round. These elements should be kept separate from any elements that are currently in the element storage area. The scientists may place these elements in the research field along with the elements from their workbench, but can only place as many as their research experiment level allows. When the scientist has completed placing elements, any elements remaining from the safety goggles should be placed back into the element bag. Scientists may not trade any of the safety goggle elements using the 3 for 1 trade or through the use of the pipette tool. The lab key. You can discard the lab key at the end of the lab phase to immediately claim the wooden lab key and be the lead scientist at the start of the next turn. Pipette. During the research phase, the scientist that owns the pipette may now trade two of one element for any one element in the bag in lieu of the three for one trade. Next we have the journal. The journal is acquired when a scientist improves their study experiment only. With the journal, once during the lab phase, Whenever that scientist scores their completed compounds, the scientist may place one element from the completed compound back to their element storage space. Next up is my favorite, the graduated cylinder. During the lab phase, the scientist that owns the graduated cylinder may move any one experiment down one level to move a different experiment up one level. This can only be done once per round. If this movement results in a study experiment from being reduced, and there are more of that scientist's claim tokens in the research field than the new level would allow, the scientists must immediately remove one of their claim tokens from an unclaimed compound. If the scientist reduces the lab experiment, the scientist must return the storage marker to the lab experiment and discard any elements from their workbench that are in excess of the new limit. This is the same if they move down the study limit and own the journal, they must return the journal back to the scoreboard. The last tool is the Bunsen burner. A scientist can discard the Bunsen burner at any time during the research phase to add one flame token to any compound that does not currently have a flame token. As in a lab fire, scientists may discard the fire extinguisher to prevent the placement of this flame token. If a fire extinguisher is used, the Bunsen burner is discarded with zero effect. A flame token could be placed on a non-flammable compound. That compound would now be treated as flammable. A non-flammable compound's flame token limit is two. A Bunsen burner may also be used to place a flame token on a compound with a flame token limit of one. This would result in that compound blowing up immediately. Fun! Some compound cards are marked with chemical reaction icons. These are circular icons that you'll find on the bottom right hand corner. When a scientist scores a compound, the effects of the chemical reaction are mandatory and immediately take place. There are two different chemical reactions in the base game of Compounded. First one is Grant. When this chemical reaction triggers, the scientist must choose another scientist's and one of their experiments. That experiment moves up one level. The scientist must choose an experiment that is not at its maximum level. If all experiments are at their maximum levels, the atomic points on the compound are then shared between the two scientists. 
If the atomic points cannot be divided equally, the point difference is not counted for either scientist. The second chemical reaction is the volatile chemical reaction. When this chemical reaction triggers, it acts as if a lab fire was just revealed from the compound deck. You'll follow the same rules of a lab fire. This can result in compounds exploding immediately before they are scored. Note though, although there cannot be two lab fire cards in a single turn, there may be both a lab fire and a volatile chemical reaction. Science can sometimes be dangerous. Play safely. And last but not least, let's learn how to win the game of Compounded. The game of Compounded will end when a scientist reaches 50 atomic points at the end of a lab phase, a scientist completes three of the four experiments on their workbench, or the research field is unable to be filled completely during the lab phase. If a scientist has reached or exceeded 50 atomic points, or completed three of the four experiments on the workbench, there is one additional round of gameplay. However, if the research field is unable to be filled completely during the lab phase, the game ends immediately. At the end of the game, the scientists will score one atomic point for each element that is on any uncompleted compounds they have claimed. Each scientist scores one atomic point for every two elements on their workbench. If a scientist has a completed and unused fire extinguisher at the end of the game, it is worth four atomic points. Each wild element that a scientist still possesses at the end of the game is worth two atomic points. The scientist with the most atomic points at the end of the game is the winner. In the case of a tie, you share the victory. Give yourselves a nice hearty handshake.